Hey guys, this is Linda McConnell and Zach McConnell with Live Tomorrow Now. We are in the beautiful city of San Antonio, the oldest city in Texas. And today we're going to be doing an RV motorhome tour, an RV how to fix it, along with seeing the wonderful sights of San Antonio. Come along with us guys. along with my husband Zach and we're here exploring my hometown. As a fifth generation San Antonian, we're so happy you're along for the ride. Whether you're attracted to San Antonio for the river walk, the mariachi music, the fabulous Mexican food, or because it's the oldest town in Texas, we're happy that you're coming along with us. Come on guys! Quarters of a mile. Take exit 141A onto Commerce Street. Hey guys, okay, we're headed down to the San Antonio Riverwalk. It's a place my wife knows really well. Yes, it's one of the number one attractions in San Antonio. You absolutely have to go there. Uh, when I was growing up, uh, San Antonio is always alive, vibrant, and on. Doesn't matter what time of the day you're going, it's no. always active down at the Riverwalk. It's just a lot of fun, okay? Absolutely. Great restaurants, yes. nice places to sit down and have a beverage and watch the people go by. And and there's mariachi music, there's historical information along the way, there's riverboat barges, there is so much going on. Yeah, it's really cool too how different it is in seasons. We'll show you things in kind of the winter, it's about February, and uh, but in the summer everything's so lush, the trees are out, but then again at Christmas, wow. Uh, they have all the Christmas lights. Uh, sometimes they'll have singing on the barges. I mean, it is just a must-do place. Uh, they'll have lights dangling down from the trees. It's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it's really cool. And the, they, they dress the barges up like floats in a parade and have a big parade at Christmas with the lights dangling across the river. Right, throughout the year there's numerous river yeah. parades. So you can check your calendar and uh, for when you're coming and make sure you don't miss anything. You bet, guys. Okay. San Antonio Riverwalk is for sightseeing history and is a world-renowned 15-mile urban waterway with tropical plants and mariachi music playing as you stroll. The Riverwalk, or Paseo del Rio, is a treasure and the largest urban ecosystem in the nation. The Riverwalk is tucked quietly below street level and only steps away from the Alamo. It provides a serene and pleasant way to navigate the city. Explore by a river barge for a guided tour. In the heart of downtown, explore nearby attractions like the Alamo, the King William Historic District, or visit the Historic Pearl for a drink at Hotel Emma, or shop local favorites along the Riverwalk at La Vallita Historic Village, full of art galleries, and is listed on the National Registry of Historic Places. Further south, immerse yourself at our UNESCO World Heritage Site, San Antonio's Missions National Historic Park. In 1881, the San Antonio Club was established for literary purposes. Later, it formed the San Antonio Casino Club. This building, completed in 1927 with its distinctive tiered dome, became a downtown landmark. It boasted club rooms, dining rooms, dormitories, and a ballroom. Pretty impressive for a literary club, don't you think? Hundreds of people daily take a barge tour around the horseshoe bend of the San Antonio River. That's the popular restaurant and bar field downtown Luke. The 37 by 9 foot barges are a favorite of locals and tourists alike. With an office in this corner building, the architect of the Riverwalk, Robert Hugman, was a young man with a vision. His concept of winding pathways and bridges flaking the walkway was his beautiful solution to the often overflowing river running through downtown San Antonio. Twelve thousand years ago, San Antonio's earliest inhabitants were Native Americans and witnessed a rushing body of water 200 feet wide. These early years on the river were filled with the dynamic flow of Native American tribes who came and went. When Spanish explorers reached the area in the late 17th century, they also settled along the river where Native Americans still resided. 
They found the river in a semi-arid climate, and it was the perfect place to establish San Antonio's five missions, which were built between 1718 to 1731. The Spanish built irrigation canals to irrigate the farmland and the missions. And for over 150 years, these canals covered 50 miles and brought the river to the missions, allowing the city of San Antonio to thrive and grow. In 1890, artesian wells were drilled into the Edwards Aquifer, which feeds the San Antonio Springs, turning the city's reliance on water toward the wells rather than the river. Tropical this impact delivered 17 inches of rain to the upper Almas Basin, causing the San Antonio River to rise and flood downtown buildings up to 12 feet of water. As a result, the mayor, John Tobin, launched the first phase of modern development on the river with a proposal for a bond to pay for a dam at the Almas Basin plus bridges and storm sewers. What started as flood control became a new reimagining of the river. The San Antonio River Authority was founded in 1937 to assist in flood control efforts and restoration projects. Architect Robert Hugman and developer Jack White, manager of the White Plaza Hotel, planned the initial downtown Riverwalk in March of 1941. Hotels and restaurants opened along the Riverwalk in time for the 1968 World's Fair. And in 1998, the 13-mile expansion began to create the museum and mission reaches. Tourists and locals alike gather again to admire and enjoy the river that has stolen the hearts of so many. Hey guys, we're off to the Alamo. You know, the famous saying that came up during Texas's fight for independence was, remember the Alamo. Absolutely. It's a historical site that started by the Franciscans as a mission in around 1716. And then the Spaniards came in and occupied it for a period of time. Uh, but it's really known for Texas independence and the fight against Mexico along with Santa Ana. And um, just very historical. You can visit the Alamo Chapel, the Long Barracks, the grounds. Uh, they have audio tours. They have tour guides. Uh, but really, it's a must-see for San Antonio. It's a really great place to go. It's just right off the river walk. In fact, you can go out the back of the Hyatt Hotel if you're on the river, straight out into the Alamo. And they've closed the street down in front of the Alamo now and made it a big gathering area for people to go up. You can get some great shots of the Alamo right there. And then uh, there's a little booth, kiosk, you can go to and pick up a, a guided tour that's recorded. It's like a little telephone. It's an audio tour, yeah. and it's also in several languages. So whatever your favorite language is, you can get check it in there and be able to, that, that'll be on your headset. Let's go enjoy the Alamo, guys. Absolutely. The Alamo in Spanish means cottonwood due to the large cottonwoods in the area and became the first Texas hospital. The Alamo, or church, founded in 1716, is a Franciscan mission that was the site of the historic resistance effort by a small group of determined fighters for Texas independence in 1836 from Mexico and Santa Ana. The church has become the most recognizable structure on the Alamo grounds. Originally a Spanish mission church from 1755 to 1793, Alamo had 189 and defenders was against more than 1,500 Mexican soldiers. The odds were not in the Texians' favor, but they dug deep. The theme against all odds is what resonates the most with visitors throughout the world. Many can identify with the defenders' battle and relate to their own struggle for independence in their own country. The battle cry of Remember the Alamo carries on still today. You can tour the Alamo Church, the grounds, and the Long Barrack Museum, which has existed under six flags. Admission to the Alamo is free, but expect a charge for the tours in multiple languages. Inside this fort, we'll be taking shelter either out in the open or in the ruins of the mission buildings that were here. Um, building a fire is something that you see quite often. A fire serves as a multi purpose thing. So yes, we need to cook our food with it, we need to make coffee with it, uh, but we can also boil water to keep our weapons functional. Black powder is highly corrosive, and so we need to get that out of there as much as we can, in the lock, in the, uh, off the stock, and down the barrel. So if you've heard that term, lock, stock, and barrel. 
All right, a great place we love to have breakfast at is called Shiloh's. Absolutely. It's right there, downtown, very centrally located. If you're staying at the convention center, you can just walk right down there, across the river, and it is the oldest running consistent restaurant in San Antonio that was founded in 1917 by a German family. And the inside of it, Linda, looks like it was built in 1917. It's very original. There's a bakery, great breakfast. Uh, we sat back in the trophy room in the back corner and they've got all these huge heads of of boar, of elk, of deer. It's just a neat place to go experience a lot of character. It really is. Whether you're wanting just a, a great German breakfast or you're looking just for some croissants or um, a lovely pastry, they really have it all there. Very huh. extensive menu. That's right. Let's go have some breakfast. All right. Shiloh started as a saloon in the 1900s. Then Papa Fritz Shiloh moved the saloon and his family to San Antonio in 1914. Later, Mama Shiloh started serving some of her classic German recipes. Hey guys, we are heading to the Tower of the Americas and the Institute of Texan Cultures. You know, it's really neat. The tower was built for the 1968 World's Fair. And uh, up where we live, near Dallas, there was a, a World's Fair back in the 20s. And so this came full circle much later time, and it was huge. In fact, I was a young kid, and I remember my parents taking us to the World's Fair and seeing the tower after it had just been built. It was, it was a blast. Now, Zach has a fear of heights, so I'm yeah, not really sure that he went up the tower, but I absolutely love the tower. No, it's true. I did go up the tower, guys. Oh, he I did? did. Okay. Yes. Now he admits that. Well, there's a restaurant up there. There's a viewing area, an observation deck, so it's definitely a stop-in place. When you come to San Antonio, you're going to want to come to the tower. And then after that, we went over to the Institute, which is kind of a museum about Texas history and culture. And one of the really neat things we'll show you is a sharecropper's house. Uh, this was donated by a family here in Texas. It was moved actually into uh, the, uh, the museum and you can walk through it. So we'll do that together here in a little bit. Absolutely. That was a very generous donation of H.B. Zachary. And, but you can find out all the different cultures. Whatever your background is, there's going to be a spot for you that you can find out who immigrated to Texas and what their stories were. So it's a really um, culturally enriched time to uh, spend a few hours within the Institute of Texan Cultures when you're close by visiting the tower. Okay, Linda, let's head out. Okay, off we go. St. Joseph's Catholic Church stands out of one of downtown's most magnificent church buildings. The stone sanctuary was built by the German immigrants that moved to the San Antonio area. St. Joseph's may feel a little claustrophobic because it's completely surrounded on three sides by the walls of Joski's department store. The Tower of the Americas was built for the 1968 World's Fair, but it almost didn't happen. San Antonio had to raise money. So, resident Mc Red McCombs made a fundraising call to Lee Iacocca, the president of Ford. Iacocca wasn't enthusiastic about the idea. So, Red called Governor Conley, Conley called Linda Johnson, the president, and the president called Henry Ford. That's when Lee Iacocca called McCombs back and told him that Ford would, in fact, be happy to sponsor a pavilion at the Hemisphere. On display at the Institute of Texan Cultures is this sharecropper's cabin, constructed out of simple materials around 1900. The cabin served as a resident for tenant farmers. It's a simple home with two rooms, windows with no glass, a tin roof, and a front porch. Many former slaves chose to return to the work that they had participated in before the Civil War, manual labor on farms. Sharecropping is a system where the landowners and the farm workers make a deal to rent and use the land in exchange for a share of the expected crop production. This system became a standard in the American South after the American Civil War. Hey guys, if you've enjoyed this video, why don't you go ahead and hit the subscribe button? Come on, hit that subscribe button. You have five, four, three, two, one. Did you do it? Did you subscribe? Just do it. Okay, next up is Me Tierra's and the Farmer's Market. Wow, you're talking about a wife favorite here. She grew up going to Me Tierra's and she quickly converted me. Absolutely. 
you know, Me Tears is open 24 hours a day. So I have so many memories. If we were out and about, we could go run to Me Tears. It didn't matter what time it was. And it was just a blast. But every room is just full of a splash of color. And if you haven't been there, I'm not sure you're living. <laughs> no, you got to go do it. So it was in the early 80s, the first time Linda took me there. And they had this stuff on my plate called guacamole. Can you believe this? He did not know what guacamole was. Well, you know, Mexican food wasn't as popular in the early 80s as it is now. And uh, I was a little reluctant just looking at it. But she converted me again. He was raised in a small town. But absolutely, guacamole is a staple for me. Enchiladas tamales this is all the food that i grew up on yeah and so what's really cool is right outside the restaurant that's open 24 7 just like linda said is this market and uh, the during, farmer's market yeah the it's farmer's fabulous. market it's got great fruits and vegetables during the day uh but the main part up around meteor's restaurant is uh all these shops you can go in right just right across the building right across this little open market area and there is shop after shop with Mexican dresses and just everything you can imagine. All the clothing you'd ever want. Yeah. Jewelry, bags, uh, vanilla, uh, just any type of um, Spanish type touristy kind of accessory that you might want for your house. Uh, I mean, they even have like knives though. So, I mean, it's definitely someplace. My kids yeah. always look forward going and to And everything's shops. with a with a San Antonio flair. Absolutely. Which is, just makes it that much more fun. Yeah. Here so, we go. The rich culture of San Antonio abounds throughout Marcus Square. A three-block outdoor plaza lined with restaurants, over 100 shops and produce stands, Market Square is the largest Mexican market in the United States, and it's one of America's top 10 outdoor markets, according to Frommers. Dozens of shops sell everything from hand embroidered dresses to leather belts. So, where are you going to eat while you're visiting Market Square? Head on over to Meteor's Cafe. In 1941, Pete and Cruz Cortez opened a little three-table cafe for early rising farmers. Eighty years later, Mitierra is a world-famous landmark with Tex-Mex plates, a Mexican bakery, mariachi performers, and margaritas. So if you're wondering where to eat tonight, visit this 24-hour restaurant for delicious Tex-Mex food. Hey guys, so on our way back home, we stopped in New Bronzeville. There is a, a large motorhome and a trailer uh, retailer there that we wanted to see what they had. Absolutely. So we want to show you some of the things that we found. Yeah, we'll give you a look, take you on a little tour. Come on our tour with us. So guys, we stopped into PPL Motorhomes in New Bronzeville, Texas to take a tour of some RVs. PPL has multiple locations and has sold almost 4,000 RVs in the last two years on consignment. So come see the tour on this gorgeous top of the line Class A diesel. It's built by Tiffin, which are some of the most recognizable coaches on the road today. Well, a little history here. In 1972, an RV company in Alabama went out of business. And sure enough, Bob Tiffin was absolutely fascinated with the products and he bought it. By 2005, his sons had joined the team, making the Tiffin Group a family-owned and operated business. They currently manufacture Class A, Class B, and Class C motorhomes. Well, in 2020, Thor Industries purchased the Tiffin Group. Thor continues to manufacture motorhomes in the same factories in Red Bay and Winfield in Alabama and Belmont in Mississippi. Guys, this Tiffin is beautiful. It is a 42 foot, so gives you lots of room, 2019 in beautiful condition. It's a Tiffin Phaeton. It has a Cummins 380 horsepower diesel engine. It has four slides, so look at all of the room. That's why it feels so spacious. Plenty of room for friends and family to come over, be able to eat inside, outside. It sleeps six the grandkids can come with two double beds and a king bed in the master so you can enjoy having more space in the master room. It has an impressive outside paint job. It's neutral beige cover colors and hey, a dishwasher. 
I absolutely love the high-end glossy finish ceramic tile flooring that just looks incredible. That just stole my heart. As built-in storage galore of beautiful cabinets. A double sink in the bathroom. That is a bonus. And multiple shower heads with a rain shower. You'll also gonna love the Aqua Hot. So in 2019, Phaeton by Tiffin built this RV and it has an 8.9 liter engine and it's on a power glide chassis with spring air suspension, exhaust brake, like I said four slides out for plenty of room, an Onan diesel generator, three duct air conditioners, it has the levelers, the double door 110 volt residential refrigerator you're going to love, an in-fridge ice maker so you can have those nice cold drinks with the upcoming hot summer months coming up ahead. An automatic main awning and a window slide door awnings. Oh, you got the washer and dryer and you got the backup camera to keep you safe with the GPS system. And that dishwasher, well, that's going to come in handy. Got heated tanks. You got a satellite dish and a receiver. And then you have an outside entertainment system with a TV. I mean, that way you could have the whole tailgate outside and have the whole party has two TVs, a DVD player, a satellite radio, an outside shower, a central vacuum. It also has a convection microwave and a one burner range with a built-in safe in the rear closet. They're asking $275.99. It's located in New Braunfels, Texas. It's in excellent condition. And guys, the mileage is only 12,542. And this coach even comes with its own touch-up paint. On most of our videos, we'd like to give you a little how-to and a tip that might help you while you're out camping. Oh, absolutely. We have been RV newbies and spent a lot of time uh, watching YouTubes of how-tos, but really getting out here and doing it yourself, that's how you really learn. Yep. All right, come along. We'll show you a couple of things we've learned. Today we're going to talk about a surge protector. This is an extremely important piece to have in your camping setup. Whether you have one built into your trailer or RV or motorhome or you use one at the pedestal, don't camp without it. So we'll tell you what to look for. All right, this is a progressive industry surge protector. And in this, this is a 50 amp hookup. They also come in 30 amp hookups. And it will show us if the pedestal that we're connecting to has a good polarity and if there's any faults little lights will come on and there's a little legend right down here that you can refer to that will show you what you're looking to uh, to see or what would be a warning when you get ready to hook up the first thing you need to do is open up your breaker box and in our case we're looking for a 50 amp breaker we've got our 50 amp plug right here and we want to make sure our breaker is in the off position don't plug in if it's turned up, turn that breaker off and then we're going to plug our surge protector in and check things. Okay, we've got our breaker off. We're going to go ahead and plug in our 50 amp plug and then we're not going to uh, attach it to our RV yet. We're going to check. Turn on our 50 amps and then we're going to look right in here. And this is what we're looking for is green and blue lights. No red lights, no yellow lights. That means we've got a good circuit and that we've got clean power going to the surge protector. Now the next thing we'll do is we will actually turn the breaker back off again so it's in the off position. We'll grab our power cord. We've got our power cord. We'll now plug into the surge protector and turn our breaker back on. We'll look one more time. We've got the proper color lights going. We're safe and we're ready to go. So these surge protectors come in a variety of styles. Uh, you can even go to an EMS, which is a real elaborate unit. We picked this one, it fit our budget. It was from Progressive Industries. It's a well-known, good brand. And what I really liked about it is it had the cover 
because when you close this lid, the surge protector is still on the outside. So if it rains, a lot of moisture, the actual connection's covered. A lot of them don't have it. Uh, people tell me it's okay, but you know, for me, it made me feel better and that's kind of what I wanted to do. So the last thing you might want to consider, it comes with this little piece right here and it's so that you can put a padlock on it and take a small wire or chain or nylon piece that'll go around and that way you can lock your surge protector around the pole and you don't have to worry about it being stolen. I've, I've never locked mine and so far, so good. Never had a problem. Hopefully this helps. Again, there's a lot of options. There are a lot of different ways and some of you might even have it built into your RV. The thing is, be careful, avoid a huge cost problem and have some type of quality surge protector hooked up to your RV so that you don't run into those issues. Well, we appreciate you guys coming along with us today on our trip to San Antonio. Absolutely. We are so happy y'all came and you're a part of it. And we hope that you learn more about San Antonio and that you plan a trip soon. Yeah. And by the way, this is our dog. This is Winston. Hopefully you'll see him on many of our episodes that are upcoming. And he, he's a great fella. Absolutely. And San Antonio is a pet friendly place. Yes, it is. You can take your dog right on to the river walk with you. So if you found this interesting or maybe you've learned something or just had a nice time for the last few minutes, uh, hit that subscribe button. We'd love to have you follow us on YouTube. Absolutely. Winston says subscribe now.